Good afternoon and welcome to Snero's first annual virtual collaboration summit. My name is Rob Gilfillan and I'm delighted to help kick things off today. Our team has worked hard to help bring together many valuable resources that will help guide and inform you as to the latest in AV and collaborative trends. Additionally, we've lined up some virtual entertainment later this afternoon, so feel free to kick back and decompress with a tasty beverage of your choice. Before we jump into the sessions, I'd like to spend a few minutes covering the current state of the workplace, challenges with virtual conferencing, and some food for thought moving forward. I'm sure it comes as no surprise that remote conferencing and collaboration has seen a significant surge in activity over the past several weeks. Microsoft is reporting a five-fold increase in their Teams platform usage, and we're seeing similar spikes with other platforms such as Zoom, WebEx, BlueJeans, and many others. Again, this isn't exactly breaking news. What may come as a surprise are the statistics around the modern day workplace. We've all witnessed significant improvements in collaboration over the past several years. This is due in part to ongoing solution development, generational requirements, network availability, and a company's desire to attract top talent. The most significant difference we're seeing over the past eight weeks is the workday has increased by more than 40% as employees are meeting deadlines, attending to childcare, and helping supplement gaps in remote teaching. The bottom line is working from home has become a significant challenge. I'm sure you all remember the BBC reporter that had his four-year-old son slide into his live video feed, and I'll bet this has happened to many of you over the past several weeks as well. These virtual tools are nothing new to many of us, but it seems that organizational preparedness has fallen into three distinct categories. A select few ironed out a UC strategy for the entire enterprise. These organizations spent time vetting multiple platforms and defined standards with regards to remote attendees, meeting requirements, and support protocols. As you can imagine, these folks were best prepared. Most companies fell into the tactical bucket as there were recommendations made in the workplace, but no consistency with regards to integration, usage, and overall support. The bottom tier of companies simply started using whatever tools popped up in their meeting invites, which has resulted in a fragmented meeting experience for all who attended these virtual gatherings. Another major challenge has been managing remote teams virtually, as most companies had outdated or no policies whatsoever to address standards, objectives, and more. Lastly, we were all forced to invest time to help figure out how to use these newfound tools. I'm sure many of us have sat in calls like this one where the boss can't seem to figure out how to turn off the Mr. Potato Head setting. Maybe that's a good thing. That being said, there is some really good news, as we can now attend calls from the comfort of Homer Simpson's living room. Now that makes for good conversation, doesn't it? Don't! Oh! In addition to the various technology hurdles, I'm sure we've all witnessed cultural challenges as well. How do companies maintain a healthy culture with everyone working remotely? It probably comes as no surprise that studies continually show that remote teams have trouble unplugging from work, feel disconnected from peers, and still feel that the current collaborative tools fall short of expectations. If you do some research, there's a ton of information on how to help maintain a productive virtual culture. But here are some best takeaways to consider. First, use video whenever possible. We communicate using three mediums, video, audio, and data. Audio is still the most important as the call is completely dead with poor audio. Data sharing is secondary, but video adds that personal and emotional connection to the team. Second, spend time setting up your physical and virtual workspace. This includes monitors, seating, lighting, appropriate USB tools, and a reliable network connection. I cannot stress enough making sure the home wireless is acceptable. For managers, create virtual water coolers for brainstorming sessions or happy hours. I'm sure we've all been on a Zoom happy hour at this point over the past several weeks. Lastly, research and invest in tools that are most appropriate for your team. Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and WebEx are definitely not a one-size-fits-all depending on your use case and business application. One of the recurring challenges we're seeing over the past several weeks is clients understanding the difference between UC platform and UC solution. A UC platform may meet expectations for desktop conferencing between internal team members, but an overall solution is much more than just dialing a Zoom call from your laptop. 
Today, there are integrated appliance-based solutions for manufacturers such as Poly, Crestron, and Logitech, and many others that make the meeting experience much more integrated and user-friendly. I urge you to spend the time speaking with one of our specialists to get an idea of how one of these solutions may help improve your meeting effectiveness. A comprehensive collaborative solution needs to include components from all three areas of the pre, in, and post-meeting life cycle. Each plays an important part in making sure your organization's meetings meet and exceed expectations. Define success criteria, integrated scheduling platforms, easy to use interfaces, meeting analytics, and proactive support all play an important role with delivering an exceptional meeting experience to your organization. I wanna thank you for your time today and hope that this event proves valuable in helping you improve your audiovisual and collaborative tools moving forward. Please enjoy the show.